Welcome to a presentation on building a full text search platform for the New Zealand Web Archive. The New Zealand Web Archive consists of material collected by web curators since 1999, totaling just over 30 terabytes, and .nz domain crawls that date back to 2008, now totaling over 190 terabytes. Currently public access is limited to the selective web archive via an online catalogue search through the National Library's website, and replay of content uses PyWB. In late 2020, the library was approached by Victoria University of Wellington about acquiring and hosting the New Zealand Electronic Text Collection. Comprised of digitised and born digital texts, the NZETC is a good example of an early digital humanities initiative in New Zealand. With full text search already on our radar for the web archive, we saw this as a good opportunity as the collection was already being delivered as a website and has a wide user base in the research community. We set about planning to pilot a platform for providing public full text search for this collection Taking into account some of the lessons we'd learnt in recent years, we planned a phased approach that would incrementally increase the content and scale of the platform if the pilot was successful. Soon we'll be starting our user testing, looking at users who are familiar and unfamiliar with the specific collections in the pilot and web archives in general and asking them to perform some common tasks. We did an options analysis early on to look at front-end software, search engines and software for indexing web archives, and then a short proof of concept in AWS using Whitelight, Solar and Web Archive Discovery. A lot of the approaches we took in the proof of concept were informed by another library service who run a similar solar-backed application in AWS. We decided to use Whitelight for our proof of concept due to its simple UI and ease to set up, as we needed to demonstrate fairly quickly the feasibility of delivering a full text search platform for the NZETC. While doing this, we also started our comprehensive crawls of the NZETC website, which included lots of QA and patching. Something else we did was convert the web archive files for the collections in the pilot to gzipped WARCs, as they were previously a mix of uncompressed WARCs and ARCs, just to help with the inevitable reprocessing and moving around of the data in these early stages. In the pilot, we have the option of using the public and private cloud, and we'll probably test the pilot in both. What has allowed us to do that is the relative inexpensiveness of testing in AWS, and that we already have existing infrastructure in our private cloud provider that is currently underutilized that we can use. So far, AWS has been great for how fast we've been able to get started and test quickly. Other areas within the library have had very positive feedback on using AWS as opposed to our private cloud, believing it has allowed them to deliver better public services and give them more autonomy. We found it very hard to find similar examples of large scale indexes that are not just logs in AWS and estimate the resources and components needed to scale up the index even with access to AWS experts. Perhaps this is just the nature of the beast and we will need to start implementing to really know. Now that Web Archive Discovery supports Elasticsearch, there is also the option of exploring AWS's managed open search offering, which might remove some of the headaches of running a solar cloud cluster when we look to scale up for a price. Anecdotally, the library has had mixed experiences delivering public services from our private cloud data centres. But the running costs in particular for local storage mean this is an option we need to explore. 
is the key factor that we keep coming back to is the cost of hosting the full text search index for the entire web archive. Also, the CI CD tooling that we use with our private cloud provider is Azure DevOps. So there will be some re-implementing of deployment configurations. For our AWS implementation, we decided to stick with using Kubernetes after our successful proof of concept. And for the most part, this has worked really well, although we have had some challenges around persistent volume claims and solar. Due to the small scale of the pilot, we were trying to get the implementation as simple as possible and opted not to use solar cloud, instead just standalone solar instances. We have continually found ourselves coming back to not wanting to over-engineer the solution for the pilot, trying to find a balance of hacks or workarounds that we can throw away later on, and focusing efforts more on the front-end experience and tuning the indexing process. For instance, we are running two independent solar instances behind a load balancer with their own indexes rather than trying to synchronize them as we don't plan to be updating them, hopefully, once the pilot begins. Also, we did have some initial permission issues when we switched to using an organizational AWS account and logging in as federated users due to the top-level service control policies for the organization. So while we've been getting the pilot ready, we've also been looking at what we are indexing with Web Archive Discovery and how we could reduce the size of the index. On the right-hand side of this slide are the fields that we've identified for excluding from the solar index for now, based on how much data they were storing and their usefulness to us. In our relatively small tests, excluding these fields reduced the index by between 30 to 40 percent. An issue we thought we were having with indexing with Web Archive Discovery was in relation to the maximum length for the content field in our solar documents. During indexing, we were getting lots of warnings in the logs about records exceeding the maximum content length. This was a red flag, considering we wanted all of our NZETC content indexed and searchable. We kept bumping up the maximum length until we took a deeper look at the URLs triggering these warnings. They turned out to be very large TEI XML files for each text in the NZETC collection, which turned out to be a non-issue as they're not queried during the searches anyway. Possibly it's worth excluding them from the index to begin with, but we've come back to how much tuning of the index do we do for individual collections. One of the other issues we noticed indexing the NZETC collection with Web Archive Discovery was a lot of duplicate titles. For instance, our index had 344 results with the title Letters. We found we were at the mercy of the title tag on the collection pages. So with some Python scripting, we extracted more relevant title data from each page and generated new titles that we will update the index with. In hindsight, we could probably have extended one of the Web Archive Discovery Analyzer classes to achieve this during the indexing process. Although once we start to scale and include more Web Archives, Fixing issues like this doesn't look feasible. Here are some examples of the new titles we generated, which are a lot more descriptive. The next steps for us are to start our user testing with library and university staff, more in-depth testing of Solar Wayback as a long-term front-end UI, given that Wireclight doesn't appear to have a user base anymore and no longer has funding to support it. We also want to investigate in the not too distant future, indexing content into multiple collections, grouping search results for the same resources, and looking at how we manage access control across our replay system and a full text search platform. 
Thank you.